And with that, I'd like to kick off the first session of the day. It's my absolute pleasure to invite here on stage for the very first session of the India Today Education Summit, Mr. Praveen Prakash, Principal Secretary to the Government of Andhra Pradesh. So join us, please, on the stage. A big round of applause, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, when I started off, I did speak about, you know, what Andhra Pradesh has done right. And perhaps the starting point of that is kind of understanding how to get right the education policy of the government. What is going to be, you know, the foresighted approach that you have when you're going to education in Andhra. So what was that about, really, sir? How did you start that off? Uh, the reforms which the... Uh, school Education Department of Government of Andhra Pradesh started in year 2019 when the present government assumed the office. All the reforms and the policy changes were fundamentally were based on two big blocks. And the first block was while doing, take, making any change, doing any reform, how can we make the students and the children of Andhra Pradesh globally more employable. And that was the first big block. And uh, I will talk about it with few examples. For example, to make a student in India today, or in Andhra Pradesh today, more globally employable, the first requirement is that the student or a child should be very proficient in English language. And when we talk about English language, and if you talk about the experts in, in, the, school, in the education sector, they will talk about, they will say that English proficiency doesn't come only from the English subject. It's also about English of mathematics, English of science, English of social science. And therefore, there is a need for English as a medium of instruction in schools. And the journey in the last four years, today, in all 45,000 government schools, public schools, which we have in Andhra Pradesh, be it in towns like Tirupati, be it in uh, rural areas, be it in a far flung tribal areas, also in most remote tribal areas. Every school in Andhra Pradesh today have an English medium section. So that's the first big change, keeping that big goal of a big block of making students uh, globally employable. The second thing was, is if you have to make a child globally employable, then it's not only about the comprehension of English language or good grammar or good vocabulary. It, it's also about the speaking skill, listening skill. Unfortunately, in the last 60 or 70 years, nobody in our country has the capacity or has developed a framework to assess the listening or, or, a, or a speaking skill, a skill framework. Uh, we were lucky that Education Testing Services, Princeton, which conducts this TOEFL exam for the senior students. For example, of all of us after graduation wants to do a postgrad from US or UK, we, act, uh, we, we take this TOEFL examination. 10 years back, they have come up with another pro two more products, TOEFL Primary for third, fourth, fifth class students, and TOEFL Junior, that is for sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth students. So we have we have signed up with them, we have entered into agreement with them, and now the, all these 45 lakhs, 40 lakh students who are studying in, in government schools in Andhra Pradesh will also will be doing this certificate course of TOEFL Junior and TOEFL Primary. Come April 2024, this April, all these students will be writing the readiness test uh, for a TOEFL Primary and TOEFL Junior. So that's the second big thing, uh, second thing which we have done, keeping that the, the bigger goal of making the students globally employable. The third thing was, if you have to make our today's students globally employable, we have to give them the glimpse of these future skills, whether it's a machine learning, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, Web 3.0, blockchain technology. Uh, uh, these, these future skills, we should give them exposure. And we have introduced this as a subject and from January onwards, we have started it. And from coming, coming academic year in full-fledged, we'll be starting 
this subject called future skill subject from class 8. So again, the connect is how do I make students globally more employable? The fourth thing is if you have to make in this era of, as I said about machine learning, artificial intelligence, if you have to make the students globally more employable, apart from whatever is our regular uh, assessment process or regular subjects are there, we have to expose them to the new subjects. And what are those new subjects? The first is subject of leadership. And that's very critical. The second is interdisciplinary. Third is mainstreaming these extracurricular activities. And if you look at these areas, one of the organizations which is very strong globally is IB, the International Baccalaureate. And we have entered into agreement with them. Yet now, from next year onwards, the journey is starting for a joint certification with, with International Baccalaureate and the, and the government of Andhra Pradesh. The students of Andhra Pradesh will be getting this certificate. So that's the one big block. All the reforms which started in 2019, one is, I'm, why I'm doing this reform? I'm doing this reform. Why I'm making this policy change to make the students globally more employable. And the second is, was a big shift in thinking itself, in the mindset itself. Since independence, the public schools or the government schools have been seen as a places where we keep thinking about can we give minimum? Can we give a school building so that if there's a cyclone, if there's a rain, students are not sitting and not getting drenched? Can I just give a school? Starting from there, now our policies in government is not the minimum. Can we give the public school students, the government school students the best, if not the better than the best in any school, any private school or a corporate school in, in India. So that's the shift we have made. For example, we are not talking about if, if, if the typical thinking is talk about minimum a classroom, Andhra Pradesh is talking about the good ventilated classroom with, fine, uh, with fans, lights, with a digital board, with good, uh, uh, with good benches. If, uh, if, if the whole, whole other, other places, if people are talking about uh, in, in, a, in a government school, a child should have entitlement of minimum at least two, if, if you give two, if you provide two pair of uniforms, one set of test book, it is sufficient. Andhra Pradesh is not saying this. Andhra Pradesh is saying, what is the best which is being given to the student? When the students in this country of the best school goes to, goes to school, what all they have. So we have now to the students which provide in government schools, not only the uniform, not only the test books, the test book itself, because we are making a transition from, 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 from to an English medium, these are all bilingual test book. In other words, the, the cost of printing this test book is double than what for a, for a normal one is. We are providing school bags, shoes, belt, uh, and also to the class 8 students onwards, a personalized digital device. And what's the idea? The idea is, the general thinking is, in public schools, if you can give up, expose the students for a shared digital device for an hour or two, for 20 students, one computer, it is sufficient. Andhra Pradesh says, what is the best available, what is the best in the, in the country? The best in the country is class 8 onwards. The, the device, the, the personalized device. So that's the big shift. So to sum up again, the two big shifts which I see. One is make reforms, make changes in the system so that the students of Andhra Pradesh are globally more employable. And second, make the changes in the system Invest more in, in, in schools because change this mindset. Change this mindset of having minimum facilities or minimum facilities to the students and schools in government sector or public sector to the best facilities to the schools and students in government sector. You know, from what you've told us, the kind of reforms are quite simply amazing, transformational in Andhra Pradesh and in schools. But how, sir, and you started off by explaining that to me, saying that, you know, it isn't just in the cities of Andhra Pradesh. This is in most towns, all towns of Andhra Pradesh now that you've ensured this kind of development seeps through. 
How did you ensure that? Because you've done that in just from 2019 to now. So how did you really do that transformation? How did you ensure that it seeps through into every layer? So, ma'am, as I said, it's not only about the towns. So we're not only talking about those uh, schools which are there in 115 North towns in Andhra Pradesh. We're also talking about these schools, these 40,000 schools which are there in these 10,000 villages, whether it's a, 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 whether, whether these the villages are uh, even the remotest tribal areas also. Ma'am, the way our system in our country is, it's, it's the political leadership which sets up the agenda. And then we, as a bureaucrats, as a civil servants, we take the agenda with, with, with total energy and impl implement this in, this in the true, true spirit. So to achieve this, the first thing is about availability of budget. If we have money, then only we can get all those dreams. So first thing was, we were lucky uh, that the government, the chief, uh, the, our chief minister, provided huge budget to our, to our department. If we leave out the salary part, I mean, if you look at the, any state government school education budget, around 70 to 80 percent of the budget goes towards the salary of the teachers or other non-academic staff also. But if you leave out that, apart from salary, we have spent something like 74,000 crore in last four years. In other words, it is something like 9 billion US dollars. Now that's a lot of money. And 9 billion US dollars, where it has gone. So if you look at, if you compare, if you compare a, a state of Andhra Pradesh size, a Andhra Pradesh size state in our country, for improving the infrastructure in the schools, spend something around average 250 to 300 crores. We spend in the last four, three to four years average 2,500 to 3,000 crore, 10 times more than any average state government uh, does in India. So that's about school infrastructure. Second, if you look at uh, uh, the student entitlement, which I talked about earlier, which is about books, uh, uniforms, and all, a typical state spends around 300 to 400 rupees per student per year. While Andhra Pradesh now today spends something like 2,700 to 3,000 rupees per student per year, which again roughly will be something around 10 times more than the average. Third, uh, is if you, if, you, if you look at the midday meal program, which is there in our country for the last 20, 25 years, average state spends around per child per day six to seven rupees. Andhra Pradesh spends 21 rupees per day per child. So is this transformation was possible, as I said, was this huge investment which is coming from the, from the budget. And budget is nothing but the priority of the government. So, we were lucky from the school education department that it became the priority of the, for, for the chief minister and we got this money. Digital technology, if you look at. As I said, this, in, 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 in most of the states, if you go and see, the public schools and government schools will have for 20 to 25 or 30 students one computer lab desktop or a laptop. Or you will see in those public or government schools one smart classroom or a digital classroom. Today in Andhra Pradesh, class 6th onward, we have from class 6 to 12th in our 6,700 schools, we have around 62,000 classrooms. Every classroom is a smart classroom. Every classroom is a smart classroom. I mean, you see the journey from if I had done two per class, two per school, it would have been around 12,000 smart classrooms. But we have not done 12,000 smart classrooms. We have done 60,000 classrooms. Second, 
we are giving personal device from 8th onward for which each means student. for each student which means the ratio of 1 is to 20 in andhra pradesh context has become 1 is to 1 and that's the investment of so we are talking about investment which we have done in digital technology in the last uh, last two years it's uh, only in last two years we have spent something around 2200 crores so all this reform which we are talking about became possible because of agenda setting by the government, by the new government. And to back the agenda setting, to walk the top, the budget which was provided to the school education department. But beyond that also, sir, uh, to build this kind of digital infrastructure is a huge challenge. And to overcome that, not just in the sense of what you said about, you know, ensuring the right amount of devices are given, ensuring these classrooms turn completely digital. It's also upskilling of teachers, upskilling of staff. So how did you ensure that you looked into all of those aspects to make this kind of, you know, tech-led learning possible? So if you look at this teacher's capacity uh, journey in India uh, in the last uh, 20, 25 years, the model which uh, till now India has followed in different, in different states is a hand-holding by high school teachers to the, they handhold the primary school teachers. There is a concept called school complex. So school complex, the nodal school will be a high school. And these high school teachers do a handholding, capacity building of a primary school teachers. So typically, for example, in Andhra Pradesh, we have 6,000 high schools, 6,000 high schools, and we have around 40,000 primary schools. So the ratio of say seven to eight or nine primary schools. So these teachers do the handholding. So that has been the practice in India. AP Andhra Pradesh in the last two years went one step ahead. Why only the handholding by high school teachers to the primary school teachers? If digital technology-led teaching and learning is so critical, if it is so central to the education system, why can't higher education institutions, why can't engineering colleges in Andhra Pradesh, because the engineering colleges are the place, they are the hub, they are the hub of all technology, technology, digital technology. Why can't they be the center of building the capacity of, of teachers? So we took for building the capacity of teachers, so we, we, we followed two strategies. The first was, the teachers, the assistant professors, the associate professors of computer science, of electronics, uh, they became the mentor for the teachers of high, teachers uh, in, who, who were in high schools and primary schools who had to do this tech-led uh, teaching. And the students have to do, these engineering college students have to do an internship or a project work in their final semester. Why can't technology-led teaching and learning also become one of the subject for their project work? As we speak now today, today around 2,000 engineering students of final year, they are there in the schools. Each student handles three, three high schools, which means two days in a week. He goes there, talks to the teacher, talks to him in one-to-one, -one, asks what is the fear you have, how you build your more capacity on technology-led teaching and learning. So almost continuous basis, apart from the professor building the capacity, the students, the finalist students also going and having a one-to-one -one conversation with the teachers and building the capacity. So the student becomes the teacher essentially. Students becomes the facilitator. Okay. Facilitator, because now it's a new thing. The, in technology, as all of us know, digital technology, what is relevant today? I agree. Is after I, three years, it will not, it'll and not I, be... And I must say, I've never heard this strategy anywhere else before. Of students being used to kind of teach teachers as well. So we are talking about a new level of, of connect or hub or spoke model. Not from high school to primary school. We are talking about engineering colleges to high school. So that's the way we are uh, approaching it.
Another aspect, since you brought up uh, engineering colleges in the state, is that uh, Andhra and Telangana has the distinct reputation of send, uh, sending more students to the United States for studies. So is the government looking, sir, to kind of boost children and ensure that they're better prepared, better equipped to go to the United States and study? Or are you looking at bettering the infrastructure here so that most students say, hey, let me not go to America, let me stay in Andhra, in my hometown or in my city and study? See, the way our policy, and this we keep discussing in our review meetings also with our chief minister, and he constantly talks about this issue. Let's, let's build their capacity and let's, let the final choice be left to the student. We should respect the decision of the students. We should respect the decision of the parents and students together. In fact, when the first time when we, in 2020, we started, we have a scheme uh, for the poor students uh, from, the cla from class 1 to 12, uh, means scholarship, where every, st every child, every student who has attendance of more than 75%, his or uh, her mother uh, gets, uh, uh, gets around... Uh, uh, 13,000 rupees uh, in compensation of the wage loss. A lot of discussion was there that let us do this scheme only for the students who are going to the government school. Uh, the, the, the chief minister was of the view, no, we should respect, we should respect the, the, the parents' choice or the students' choice. Let the scheme be open even to the students, the poor students who are studying in private school. So it's not one against other. It has to be a positive com competition. It need not, it should not be a restrictive competition. My government school should be so good that naturally the parents and students should come to me, not forcefully. Wonderful. Uh, in the last uh, few years, uh, uh, has the chief minister had a checklist of sorts of how he wants education to be transformed and how many of those boxes have been ticked essentially? So education and health, ma'am, they, they are very process driven and in long gestation sectors. It's not like, you know, it's not like a building which I have to construct in one year, two years, I can construct a building, a flyover I want to construct, I can construct a flyover in two or th three years. Education and, and education and health, these two sectors are so much HR-driven, human, human resource-driven sectors. It requires a constant effort over a period of time. It requires a good seven to eight years, constant, constantly working on those to get the results. But having said that, they are, we, are, we are very, very encouraging signs. If you see from a journey in the last four years, we are getting very encouraging signs and that is the oxygen for all of us. That yes, we are on the correct path. We are moving forward and we'll achieve that goal in, in, in next five to seven years. Some of the indicators which excite us and which gives us the oxygen. For example, in 2019, the gross enrollment ratio of secondary schools, which is basically class 9th and 10th, is a very critical indicator in our country. Used to be, in Andhra Pradesh, it used to be 76%. Today, thanks to all this reform, the gross enrollment ratio for class 9th and 10th in Andhra Pradesh is 100%. 11, 12, it's called senior, sec senior secondary gross enrollment ratio. Average, if just to give you a sense, the country average is 56%. Andhra Pradesh in 19 used to be somewhere around 48%. Today, we are at 76%. There's one district in Andhra Pradesh, uh, not very far from Tirupati, called Nandeyal district. The Nandyal district has claimed and has achieved 100% GR in all the three sectors. We call it composite GR from class 1 to class 12. But the way we position ourselves, we say that's what the work we have done. But let it be verified 
by a third party, which is not a state government entity. So we have requested the Quality Council of India, which is, uh, which is a government of India uh, organization, a very reputed organization. We have asked Quality Council of India to check and tell what we are saying is correct or not. I may say, yes, I have achieved 100%, I have done this, etc., etc. People may say, okay, you are the doer, and you are announced, you are the student, and you yourself are writing exam for yourself. So as we speak today here, the Quality Council of India has started their work in, in, in Nandyal, and two months from now, you will hear this news that Nandyal district has perhaps become the first district in the country, in the country. We have 600 such districts in our country. First district in the country which has achieved this composite GR. So one is access part of it. We see early science, we see these results, positive results as I have spoken, gives us, it, it gives us oxygen. The second thing is about learning outcomes. Okay, these are inputs. What are the learning outcomes? So as you know, in our, uh, in our system, in Indian system, till class ninth, it's all assessment. The examination, the first public examination, uh, very proctored, starts in class 10th in our country. So if you look at the class 10th result of Andhra Pradesh this year, of government schools, I mean, that's where you're the bottom of the pyramid are. Our high school result this year, compared to last year, is up by 13%. It's not 1 or 2 percent. We are up by 13 percent compared to last year. If you look at the students who scored the 10 highest ranks, I mean, obviously in every rank there will be many students. It's only 600, maximum marks is 600. So if you see last year, there were 25 students from government schools which were in the top 10 scores top 10 scores or top 10 ranks. This year, this figure has gone up from 25 to 63. If we look at first division, 60% and above, that number also has gone up by 7%. So these are the indicators, whether it's access, whether it's learning outcomes, we feel that we are in a correct path. We have to keep, uh, keep uh, walking. And as uh, we keep in our review meetings, our chief minister keeps motivating us by saying, always think, can I do better than what I have done yesterday? So that has to be journey. Education and health are like that sector. So he keeps you moving. He keeps you achieving all of these goals. Uh, what's also important in the sector like education is, as you've mentioned, using the kind of tools that you have available, using technology. And a big aspect of that, the buzzword going into 2024, has been AI, artificial intelligence. And I understand that AI also has played a big, big role in education in Andhra Pradesh. Can you explain how exactly to us? Yes, ma'am, ma there will be a detailed session on this. Yes. I'll just touch upon uh, this. So, when we, as I said about in the policy, the second part of policy was, is it anything which my students who are studying in government school, are they missing anything? And then one of the area which was brought to the notice was, in the private schools or the, for the middle class family student, uh, children, they have something called remedial coaching in the evening, the tuitions in the evening. So morning they go to schools and evening the tuitions. Correct. How do, obviously we can't provide tuitions, but can technology help us in this? As I said, we gave this personalized device from the class eight onwards to every student. And personalized device means a student has access to to, to, to all that e-content 24 by 7. And then the content which you took was which everybody, if you ask every second or third student in this country, the best, uh, the best in the country, the Baiju's content. I mean, uh, we are thankful to, the, uh, to Mr. Baiju's for providing this content to us. And what's I mean, those who have gone through the content, they will tell. 
What's special about that content is the content has been uh, made using gamification as a process, as an approach. So like we get excited playing a video game. Uh, you have, I've earned this point, that point, this medal, you reach there, this destination. Similarly, this content which has been made by this Baijus company has actually been built using gamification as a, as a, as a concept. So we gave this content to all the students and loaded in their, loaded in their uh, um, uh, tabs. The second thing was, okay, I have seen the content morning and the, you know, in the morning time the student and uh, the teachers have told, evening I am seeing the content, what will, if I have a doubt, what will I do till I have a doubt? I need a clarification. So we have also loaded a AI bot, a AI tutor in all those tabs. And you see, and you, you know this generative AI. Generative AI is, I can do a conversation. See, if, if you search through, through any, any other search tool like Google and all, it will just list out one lakh pages, two lakh pages, three lakh pages. But these generative AI will give you, will have a conversation as if I'm having a conversation with a human being. So these all tabs which we have been given, for example, every, we have four lakh, stu, uh, we have uh, around four lakh students in every class. So all four lakh students in class ninth, all four lakh students in class eight. We started this for last year, so two years over. So these eight lakh students have this AI tutor. They have a tutor. They have a friend with them. They have a tuition teacher. You have a tuition teacher in the evening. But the way we have trained this AI bot, it will say, uh, it will say, suppose it's a biology AI bot, and if a child asks any question other than the biology, then it will say, student, I am your biology teacher. I can't answer you anything other than that. So that's the way it has been trained. So that's the way we are using AI for the education purpose. We are also using AI for our governance process. Uh, for example, I'll just give you a, one or two examples of what for governance. Now, as I said, we are spending a lot of money in, uh, in providing midday meal. As I said, other states are spending six rupees, seven rupees per child per day. And we are spending 21. So huge, lot of money we are spending. Can I use artificial intelligence for monitoring the quality of meal which is being provided? So how did we achieve this? We, we on rotation basis, so a school has a 15 or 20, 15 teachers, a 10 or 15 teachers. On a rotation basis, there's a duty of one teacher who takes this picture. So in all 45,000 schools, one teacher on a rotation basis takes the picture of this, of the meal which is prepared on that day and uploads on the cloud. And this tool, which has been trained by, actually the, trained by using almost 2.5 crore pictures of meals, can detect, is it a good meal or it's not a good meal. Similarly, as I said, we are spending so much money under, under, uh, under uh, uh, infrastructure upgradation. In fact, not only upgradation, uh, uh, the chief minister was very particular that whatever infrastructure we are creating, we should have maintain it also equally well. So we have perhaps we are the only state in the country which has a budget line called toilet maintenance fund. There is a separate budget head called toilet, which means this money will be used only for maintaining toilets, nothing else in the school. So almost we spend around the budget line is something around 450 crores. So when we are spending so much money in constructing the best quality of toilets, maintaining, then same similar thing has been done that on rotation basis, uh, there is a responsibility. You click the picture every day, put it in the cloud, again using almost uh, uh, 1.5 to 2 crore pictures of toilets. Now this AI tool is there, which 
which reads it and tells it's a good toilet. And then that message goes to all the supervisory officers, whether they're at a block level, district level, etc. So AI for academic purpose and AI for a non-academic purpose, both we are using. That sounds amazing, and it's the best use, perhaps, of technology uh, for education also, and as you said, also to kind of keep stock of what's happening uh, in many of these school systems. You know, the government schools right now in Andhra Pradesh clearly have undergone this transformation, but there is, a, uh, and it's very real, we've seen this many years ago, perhaps today lesser, but it's still there, a stereotype linked to government schools, that, you know, private schools are better, government school students are in the same. And today, when you talk about all of these opportunities, these kind of features, resources available with students, uh, how do you also ensure that they're employable globally? Their global employability opportunities are also available to these students. As I, as I said, that all these interventions which we are making, in the beginning itself, I was explaining, if, if, if uh, five years from now, of seven years from now, if a student from a Andhra Pradesh government school says, I have TOEFL primary certification, I have TOEFL junior certification, my 10th class certificate or my 12th class certificate is a joint certification with the international baccalaureate. I have also a subject certificate with the future skills like artificial intelligence, machine learning. It's not that student will be after the companies. We feel the other way around, companies will be after the students of Andhra Pradesh. Amazingly put. Uh, your state, of course, has focused so much on education, as you've told us. And now you hear a lot of these education models, the Andhra education model, uh, the Delhi education model. What does it really do for a state, sir? Yes, it transforms the life of a student. It transforms the opportunities that a student has. But why is education so crucial in also ensuring, you know, holistic development of a state or of the country? As I said, uh, this... Uh the, in, in, in governance, there are 60, 70 different areas, and every area has a department. The departments, different departments in government. And uh, it's the political leadership which then prioritize out of one, one to 70. So definitely, why education has been in so much in focus and is, 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 is under so much talk, everybody's talking about Andhra Pradesh mode model, is, uh, uh, is is because it has been put as a very very high priority by the by the by the chief minister. Why chief minister has put it as a high priority? He is there tomorrow with you. Perhaps you will ask this question from him. What I understand, what a, what a sense I get, and, and the correct answer will be given by him also. But what a sense I get that if Andhra Pradesh has to compete with the likes of Chennai. Bangalore and Hyderabad, then what they can position to the global companies is, is that we have better quality of human power. We have globally employable human power. And I have heard this from the Chief Minister many times, because the two big, big areas where uh, AP has advantage over others even we don't have uh, Chennai's and Bangalore's and Hyderabad's, is one is port-led industrialization. On the East Coast, we have the lo longest coastline. And second, the AP is endowed with beautiful uh, uh, nature. So the ecotourism is possible. And, and he keeps talking about it. In these two sectors, these, these service sectors have to grow. Then the students, the youth of Andhra Pradesh should be globally employable. If they are globally employable, the best industries will come and put up their shops in, in, in the industrial zone, which are there next to the ports. The big uh, tourism, uh, shift, uh, tourism, uh, uh, tourism jump will come in our country. So I think one is his own priority, his own passion. I think when we see him, he... He's personally so, uh, passionate. So, now you see it's January. It's January. 
the election is only two, two and a half months. Ideally, and our state is going for election, which is both uh, parliament as well as assembly election. It's a, it's a big thing for the state. So ideally, the chief minister should be only thinking about politics. But every day, almost every day from him or from his office, I get three or four calls. What happened to that project? What happened to that project? What happened to that project? So I think it's his passion. And with the passion, the vision which I spoke about. And as Mr. Prakash said, tomorrow, of course, we'll hear from the Chief Minister himself about his personal passion in transforming education. Going forward, sir, with all the reforms that you've undertaken to change the face of education in Andhra Pradesh, going forward in the years to come, what do you think needs to be kind of added up to pad up the education sector in Andhra? What really will give it that leg up after the steps that you've taken so far? I think the, the big project which you are looking up to is our partnership with uh, uh, IB, the International Baccalaureate. Uh, we have entered into inter a partnership with them. And uh, the next one year, we will be training all our officials, not only teachers, but officials, and we'll start this journey of, and the partnership which we are doing with uh, the with, uh, International Baccalaureate or IB is, is in a very, very uh, a sequential or progressive manner. We're starting every year one class. So the whole transformation of IB-inspired teaching will happen in government schools in Andhra Pradesh from one year from class one, the next year class one to two, the next year one, two, three. So it's in a gradual manner. So the system is also able to absorb the transformation better. So I think that's the one big thing which we are looking at. We also want to consolidate on, on as I said, about can we put this future skills, future skills seeds in the minds of the students from class eight through the students of engineering college. And how it is being visualized is if it's a eight credit project work for an engineering college student, he will be assessed how good he taught, he facilitated the students in this future skill subject. So that's a, that's, a, that's a second area which we'll be looking. Third area also where I'm sure that we are looking up and the whole country will be looking, how good is this product called TOEFL Primary or a TOEFL Junior? It has, which is a very new project, new product. Uh, TOEFL uh, senior has been in existence. They will tell you EETS, I think, from 65, 70, or some 75 onwards. But these are like last 10 to 15 years, never attempted in government schools in India. So these are the three things which we have to consolidate uh, uh, on us and uh, take the journey forward. But as everybody says, it will be a uh, taste of pudding is in eating. We would like to see, we call the batch which was in class sixth, uh, 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 class sixth in year 2020-21. The batch which was in class uh, uh, sixth in, in year 2020-21 as our monitor batch or a pilot batch or batch which is holding the flag of the reforms agenda of Andhra Pradesh. And that's the batch which we would like to observe, monitor very closely. And we know that if that batch the employability, global employability is higher, then we will be assured that the batches coming after this their batch will also have a better. So our all our eyes is on that batch. This batch will be writing their 10th exam next year. They are in 9th right now. So they will be writing their 10th exam next year. So March 26 is when they will be writing their class, uh, uh, sorry, March 25 will be the writing the class 10th. So it's an 20, examination for you as well. For <laughs> March 27, they'll be writing 12th. And then the journey for the global employability will start. Oh, wonderful. Before I wrap this up, sir, uh, just quickly, you know, from our conversation, from the entire conversation, if I had to get you to sum it up as what is the Andhra education model? If you could just define the Andhra education model for us. The Andhra education model is be dynamic. Listen to the needs of the students. Listen to the market. See, it's a dynamic market. 
The 21st century is a very dynamic century. Listen to the market. Realign your thought process, realign your strategies, keeping the market in mind, and make your students globally employable. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Mr. Praveen Prakash, for joining us here at the India Today Education Summit. A big round of applause, please, for Mr. Prakash. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.